Plymouth White Marsh friends and families, we welcome you back for another PW Sports broadcast exclusively on CITV. I'm Aaron Sean. As you can tell, we're not in PW this time. We're up at Upper Moreland right now as the PW Colonials go up against the Upper Moreland Bears for the state championship game today. PW won the coin toss, so they'll be receiving first. And this is a matchup between really, really good teams, two very strong teams. Colonials are coming in at 7-2, and two, have not lost since September 9th. Obviously, they're on a roll. They, can, they feel like they can beat anyone. They're going up against a team that has pretty much beat everyone that's been in their way in the Upper Moreland Bears. They sit with an 8-1 record. Coincidentally, their last loss came on September 9th as well. It promises to be a great matchup here. The Colonials are a very offensive, strong team. That's something that we saw last week, PW's game, when they faced off against Wissahickon. The team scored 56 points, a lot of it coming in the first two quarters. As for the Bears, only three games this year have their opponents scored more than 20 points. They get ready for the kickoff here. And there it goes down the field. Colonials receive it. And they're looking for a big breakaway right away. And there he goes, down the field. And P.W. has scored on the first drive of the game. What a way to start the game. A big run there from Naze Boggs on the kick return on the first play of the game. P.W. jumps out in front. Six to nothing now as they go for the extra point. And I was just finishing talking about how strong they've been offensively, and they prove it right out of the gates with a touchdown. A big way to start for the Colonials against such a strong team in Upper Moore. You really want to be able to jump out to that early lead, early lead. You want to be able to put your opponent in as much pressure early on as you can. That's something the Colonials are great at. As they go for the extra point now. And that looks like the base throw out there. Savay's kick, it's up, and it is good. Extra point is in. Seven nothing, Colonials jump out to an established lead. It took them just 15 seconds about. I just started taping this broadcast, just to hit record, got my intro out of the way, and two minutes in to recording, I've got a touchdown to talk about. There's nothing more you could ask for as a Colonials announcer. This is something they have been really good at all year. Upper Moreland has a lot of kids in the stands today, of course, the big game. Cheerleaders are doing push-ups early on. I'm not in the loop, so I don't know if this is something they're doing for every touchdown. Maybe for every point scored. BW now going for the kickoff. So usually when you start a football game, you got a little bit of time to collect your thoughts, try to figure out what you're going to say. I really have not gotten a chance to think about what I'm saying yet. So, Colonials though, I'm thankful for that. We have the early lead. Of course, it's a win or go home now for the Colonials. For both teams, really. Here's the kickoff. And that one is collected by PW. It looks like PW came up with the kickoff. Wow. They are unrelenting in their pursuit of tonight's win. Go silent for a little bit. Well, I've got a very interesting setup tonight. I got a mic stand with me. Backup batteries underneath me. That I think my stand got caught on for a bit. I'm getting the mic stand and the camera. Something I thought would be a really good idea. So far, early on, it's causing a little bit of trouble, but plenty of time to adjust to that. Colonials now on their second drive of the game, and there's a snap. And the field, Colonials get a small gain here.
We're on Upper Moreland's 37-yard line to start. The handoff gets them two yards. So already the Colonials start again in really good territory now with a chance to jump out to a super quick two touchdown lead. There's a short pass out and that one is caught. There he goes and he'll be taken down. Good pass from O'Brien there catching the wide open receiver on the side. Flag is on the field though. Tell who it's on. Not quite mentioned who it's on yet. Anyways, as I was getting to earlier, a lot of people in Upper Moreland stand. It's a special night for them. PW had their senior night last week. Two weeks ago, they had homecoming. I believe for Upper Moreland, both are happening tonight. Homecoming game and senior night. So obviously very special for the kids of Upper Moreland High School here. Told he was on the Colonials. It was five yards now. Second and 13. They're on the opponent's 40. Still within scoring position, not too far out. Colonials are good at getting those big explosive plays and that's what we gotta look for here. It's the handoff. And down the field he goes. And we'll get a decent gain there. We're down three. With a 10 yard run from Nase Boggs. Guanyols move up to the 30 yard line now. And the snap, it's good. And there he goes, down the field. Winterbottom is down. Will be enough for a first down. And it was not enough for a first down. Fourth and one, but they're gonna try it again. And Tommy Hannon breaks out. He's gonna go to the end zone. It's a touchdown for the Colonials. Second touchdown for the PW Colonials as they're up 13-0 now in hostile territory. But they have taken full advantage of it. And now they're starting to establish themselves early. So base Pro will go back out for the extra point. So nine minutes, or about, we're at the nine minute 44 mark. About three minutes in now. We already have two touchdowns on the Colonial side. Looking to make it 14-0 here with the extra point. And it is in. 14-0 Colonials now have the lead again. As Upper Moreland will look to try to respond here with nine minutes, 44 seconds on the clock. Still plenty of time in this game. Of course, Upper Moreland is a strong team. I noted that they're very strong for their defense, but 31 points average per game is nothing to sneeze at. Um, it's going to be on Colonial Instructional Television on YouTube. We're not doing it live today, oh, unfortunately. No. So there's no speed for anywhere? Um, I don't, we don't have one. If there is one, I don't know where the is. PW will go for their second kickoff of the game. Last time they were able to recover it, put themselves in position to score. There's the kick from Sproul. And this one is recovered. Which it gets recovered by Upper Moreland. So they'll get their first possession of the game. So Upper Marion will try to res Upper Moreland, excuse me, will try to respond. They get their first chance to make an impact offensively in this game. They'll be on their own 46-yard line to start. 
And there's a handoff. And looks like they'll make a short gain, but not much of one, if any. And it's a loss of a yard there. Loss of two yards, actually, make it second and 12. <laughs> 40, on their own 44 yard line. Bonio's trying to make it as hard as they can on the Bears. They've had a great season to this point, as we mentioned, eight and one. One of the few teams with a better record than the Colonials. Moreland ready and the flags on the field. And we'll see who the flag is on there. Looks like it's on Upper Moreland as they go further back down the field. It's like a loss of about five yards there. Second and 17 now. Bears in a bit of trouble early in this drive. Now they're down to their 39 yard line. So we have a couple of substitutions already for the Bears. Sean Herbert's one of them who just came in, number 14. So, here's the set. There's the pass, and it is intercepted by the Colonials. They take it back to the end zone, and they're going to make it. Wow. Already in this game, they are making it tough for the Bears to come back. They have been brutal on this team. Gregory Feinberg there with the interception. One of the many seniors on this team, he gets stemmed to Upper Moreland's 12 yard line now. The Colonials have it. They're looking to advance, but it won't make it very far up the field this drive. Second and 10 for the Colonials as they don't gain any yards on the play. A little over eight minutes to go. Colonials looking to go up by three touchdowns already. Let's go! And there's a handoff. And that one looks to be a short gain for the Colonials. As they'll go to third down now. Third and eight on the 10 yard line. Inside handoff number 34, Tommy Hammond. So if you're the Colonials here, there's not too much pressure on you. I think if you don't get a big gain here, I would go for the extra point. Just get any extra points you can get here at this point. Colonials though looking for the eight yard gain here to get the first down. And it looks like a handoff. And there he goes, down the line for a touchdown. Luke Winterbottom again, the second touchdown of the game. Makes it 20 to nothing. There might not be as many Colonial fans, but they are certainly making themselves heard. W look for the extra point, that one is in. Savay Sproul now three for three on extra point attempts. 21 to nothing, Colonials lead. A little over seven minutes to go in the first quarter. Already looking like the well-established team here. They're looking like a machine functioning on all cylinders now. That's where the Upper Moreland Bears, still a very strong team here. 
but they got to start making the comeback at some point soon. Again, it's early enough, as we mentioned. First quarter, still not halfway through, but down to one, you want to nothing. Colonials are relentless. They're playing aggressive football, as we saw last week, too, and it's paying off for them in a big way, as you can tell. As we flash a look at the scoreboard there real quick, you can see. 7.16 to go, 21 nothing. So obviously, if you're up for Moreland, you gotta respond as soon as you can, whether it's with a field goal, however you can get the points right now, but it's something that you really, really need. There's the kickoff, it's a short one. And oh, that one was picked up by the Colonials again. Wow. Well, it looks like that one was actually recovered by Upper Moreland. It looked like the Colonials had the ball. I believe that's what they believed. But I think that one might go to Upper Moreland here. We'll see in a second. It's a chilly night here. Can't be much more than 45 degrees, I'd say. I don't have my phone on me, unfortunately. I'm charging it right now, but well far away from where I am now. Yep, it's up for Moreland's ball. Still look to respond to the Colonials here. There's the snap. Herbert takes it down the field a bit. He's making room, and that's going to be a pretty significant gain. Second down now. Two on the eight-yard run from Herbert. Upper Moreland hoping for a big response here. Got to feel like a touchdown would help a ton for team morale right now. Team morale is very important. I feel like it's one of the more underrated aspects when you're looking at how a team performs because a team that might not be doing well, a team that has morale, they're going to tire down their opponent, win or loss, to the last play of the game. There's handoff there. And it looks like a short gain. Might be enough still for the first down. Inside handoff. Number 18, Aiden Casey. Aiden Casey, the first down. They're now in PW territory for the first time this game. 43 yard line. So reset on downs here. This has all the makings of a great game on it. And so here we go. Herbert looking for a pass. There's a deep one. And it is caught. That one will be a touchdown. Upper Moreland responds as it's now 21 to 6. As their student section is on fire. Sean Herbert pass complete. James Torpy with the catch. Stephen Broder, I believe. 43 yard touchdown pass. I still be going for an extra point here. BW still with the lead, but obviously some good momentum there for the Bears to try to get back into this game. A little under six minutes now, 541. And there's the extra point attempt. It is good. 21 to 7. As Upper Moreland gets on the board for the first time. They got a big marching band, whole bunch of cheerleaders too over there. The Colonials now have to respond to Upper Moreland and have to maybe put some points on the board here. Still up by two touchdowns though. But in the first quarter, still a lot of football left. Wouldn't hurt to get another touchdown here. They're perfect three for three on their drives. It's scoring. So, Upper Moreland will go for the kickoff again. BW will be receiving for the first time in a bit.
He's getting ready for the kickoff. And there it goes. That's a deep kickoff there. And that one is gonna get all the way down near the end zone. But he's making a big run early on. Wow, look at this. They might have another kickoff for two touchdown. There he goes. And it's in upper Moreland territory. Another big kickoff return by the Colonials. As they set themselves up in upper Moreland territory again, somewhere they're becoming very familiar with. Long run for the Colonials there as they're on the Upper Moreland 30 yard line. PW now looking to score. Whistle is called. I think it's a timeout called here. Timeout called by Upper Moreland, so. I would like to remind everyone We've got a 21-7 score here, 5.28 to go. It's been a great night for the Colonials. Not much to complain about here. Their offense has fired on all cylinders. Of course, Upper Moreland scored just a drive ago, but their, ha their defense hasn't gotten much of a chance to play today. There was a quick interception there on Upper Moreland's first drive that turned into a touchdown for the Colonials. The team's talking out a game plan. Upper Moreland trying to figure out how to defend against the Colonials. Well, the more you stand out here tonight, the better it gets. I say, I, I say better very loosely. It's still very, very cold out, but I would argue it's better than it was last week back at PW, I remember. Of course, I forgot my jacket that night. It was miserable. PW gets back out to the field. Both sides are now. So first and 10 on Upper Moreland's 30 yard line. Colonials looking to strike again. And there's the handoff. There he goes, he's found open ground and he's gonna be taken down. But he makes a pretty significant gain. It's definitely good for a first down again. First and 10 on the 14 yard line, Colonials looking to make that quick response. And so here we go. It's like a handoff here. There he goes. And that one will be taken down just before the end zone. Or just before, yeah, it's the end zone. Did not get a chance to brush up on my football terminology before this. Don't be surprised if I confuse a couple terms here. But you know what, it's part of the business. PW now on the seven yard line, Upper Moreland territory. And handoff is good, but it won't get them into the end zone for the touchdown. It's two yards, third and one now on the five yard line. Let's go! Very close to bringing the ball in for the fourth touchdown of the game. And there he goes. And this one is... Uh, does not look like a touchdown. But he gets to the one yard line, as close as you can get. So first and goal now for the Colonials on the one yard line, looking for the fourth touchdown of the game. We just eclipsed under four Final minutes here. And another timeout by Upper Moreland here. Three fifty-seven on the clock here in the first quarter. Twenty-one to seven is our score. I'd like to take this moment to acknowledge the support of our Upper Moreland cheerleaders, coached by Miss Sarah Fullerton and Miss Victoria Shaw. PA announcer for Upper Moreland. Looking to uh, give some credit to the cheerleaders tonight. I would also like to acknowledge the support of our marching unit. Acknowledging the, the marching band as well. 
A second timeout called within about two minutes here for Upper Moreland. So obviously a lot to talk about now as this offense by the Colonials has just been plowing through what is normally a very, very dominant defense for the Golden Bears. As we mentioned, only 20 points or more allowed in three games. PW now first and goal on the one yard line. As this one, they pile up, but it is a touchdown for the Colonials. 28, 27 rather. Hamill looks like it just got a little off center and kicked it. And Savace Pro gets the extra point in. We'll take a second to readjust here. 28 to 7 now for the Colonials. And we're back on broadcast again. Kind of. Colonials looking to keep the energy going here. They've obviously struck a very positive vibe in negative territory here in Upper Moreland. Obviously playing on the road is difficult for teams, but PW's made it look pretty effortless. with our full attention on it and we don't have to worry about readjusting the camera legs. Kickoff comes from the Colonials. It's a deep one. It's a long drive kickoff. And it's going to be deep in Upper Moreland's own territory. Kick goes out of bounds there. So now Upper Moreland tasked with responding again. They see themselves back in that three touchdown hole. Last drive, of course, they scored a touchdown thanks to some, thanks to some big passing. As a result of the penalty, the ball will be placed at the 40 yard line. Upper Moreland will take Ball the now on the Upper, or upper Moreland 40 yard line. And there's a snap. The handoff and is it hot water here? And he'll be taken down for a loss of yards. Second and 13 now. So it's just three yards on it. Upper Moreland moves back to their 43 yard line. Upper Moreland will have to respond again. There's a pass to the man on the side, but he's taken down rather quickly by the Colonials. And that one might be another Yarsa loss of yards. Yarsa Lards, that's almost what came out of my mouth. That's impressive for me. Third and 13 now on the 37 yard line. So 
now for Moreland, looking for a big play here to advance. So if you're hearing a mic stand moving around a lot, I apologize for that. I'm trying to find the right position here so I don't keep hitting the mic stand with the camera legs. And there's a snap. Passes. Not complete, it looks like. And four and thir fourth and 13 now. Looks like it's going to be a punt for Upper Moreland. So Upper Moreland looking to punt, and this one will be a good one. Well, and you all scoop it back up. BW on their 35 yard line to start this drive. They're looking to go perfect five for five now on the drives and scoring. So BW gets ready for the fifth drive of the game. Obviously, they've been great to start so far. And snap. There it goes. Deep pass attempt, and it is caught. Naze Boggs with the catch. The Colonials now put themselves in a really good spot again. They may be playing on the road today, but they're making Upper Moreland's they're making Upper Moreland side of the field their own home ground. Become very familiar today with that place. BW goes. There's a handoff. He breaks away for some big yards. There he goes. Look at him run all the way up near the goal line. Aiden O'Brien with a big carry there. First and nine now. First and goal rather on the nine yard line, excuse me. A little over two minutes to go now. Colonials have kept the ball moving when they get the ball on offense. And there he goes, flags are on the field as that one's a quick takedown. During the play, two flags, on the two flags went down on the field at the same time. It's like a physics problem. Which one hit the ground first? See who the flags are on. That penalty will be declined as a result of the play. Well, looks, the like the the line. looks like that one was an Upper Moreland penalty. Move up, or they'll move back to second and one on the 13 yard line. I think another penalty was called on the Colonials. One for both teams there. There he goes. The carry. And he'll make it a bit of the way back up the field. Third down now. Colonial is hoping to get their fifth touchdown of the game already. Still here in the first quarter. It's hard to believe. Starting to think I won't be home in time for the Phillies game. That's one thing that's uniting both sides, Upper Moreland and PW tonight. You can find a lot of people here wearing a Phillies jersey, wearing a Phillies hat, something Philadelphia. 
As there's the handoff or a pass. And that one is caught. We won't be able to make it to the end zone. And a flag just went down on the field. Tackle made by number 64, Joe Hardy. There is a flag. Joe Hardy on the Upper Moreland side. Indication is a dead ball personal foul against the offense. That's a dead ball personal foul called on PW. Fourth down, Colonials now moved back. Down to the 27 yard line. Fourth and goal, 27 yards to go. I think the safest move here would be going for the field goal. Clock counts down here, 30 seconds to go. See how long they waited out for. And possible timeout called. Point with the White Marsh takes this timeout here. 17 seconds to go. 28 7 lead. Congratulations to 27 yards away from the end zone. So Upper Moreland Golden Bears PA announcer congratulations gives congratulations to, to other Upper Moreland sports season. teams. A special congratulations to our cross country runners, Nick Lay. Levi Boys Brennan, and girls soccer's have been highlighted Christian alongside Field, some members of the cross Brady country team. For qualifying for districts. Congratulations, Golden Bears. 28-7. Colonials a little bit far away for the touchdown here with fourth down, 27 yards out. Safe bet here, I imagine, would be go would be to go with the field goal, but PW is a team that plays aggressive. They're never a team you can count out here. Big gains have been a part of their game all year. We've seen it today with the kickoff drives. And... He's going for a deep pass. There it goes. Watch it fly, but it is incomplete. A little too far. And it'll be a turnover on downs now as Upper Moreland will receive the ball. Another flag falls down. Flag is illegal shift against the offense. That penalty be declined. Wow. Another one against PW. Legal shift, I believe it's called. Of course, Upper Moreland declines it. They'll be on their own 27 yard line here. 11 seconds to go, but remember, things will flip around. As we go into the next quarter. 11.5 seconds remain. And there he goes. There's a deep pass there. And that one is caught. I believe, no, incomplete. Just a little too much on it. Second and 10 for the Bears, still on their own 27 yard line. Four point three seconds to go, we're just at the end of the first quarter pretty much. 28-7, Colonials have the lead. Not a score I see changing too much here. And there goes Herbert. He goes with a pass there and might be incomplete. Yep. Incomplete, and the first quarter is over. PW leads it 28 to 7 here as we come to the end of the first quarter. Story on PW side has been dominance on offense. They've scored in four of their five drives. They've been very, very quick too with it. In fact, they've made some big drives on kickoff returns too. They're making it very, very difficult for Upper Moreland to get back into this game. Of course, Upper Moreland does have a touchdown. And their offense hasn't looked too bad tonight. They just haven't had as much time to show off. Both sides now talking things out. 
We've got a good spot here for our broadcast. We're right at PW Sidelines. We're up at the bleachers. We've got plenty of space to turn things around. As you can see, there's the PW Marching Band. There's Chris Bernard, a senior, leading the charge. A lot of costumes up there. We have a duck. One of them. Shaggy and Scooby-Doo. That includes Tilly McLaughlin of CITV. Let's see if she turns around. I don't think she notices. That's the kind of thing we can get away with here. The Upper Moreland will receive the ball to start the second quarter as they make a deep push down the field and they'll be stopped around midfield. A flag goes on the field again. Steven Broderick with a big return there across the 40 yard line. See the flag goes on here. Been a lot against PW here, so they'll be hoping they can get one back on Upper Moreland's side. Try to sting their momentum a little bit. Personal foul called on PW. Upper Moreland looks to have gained five more. Wow, that's not five. That's at least ten yards there. Wow, that might be a 15 yarder. So now up in Moreland, up here, might be in colonial territory actually. There he goes with a big handoff, there he goes, down the field and he is stopped. And he makes it a significant way away down the field. Inside the 20 down to about the 13 yard line. First and 10 for Upper Moreland now on the 13 yard line. Colonials have to make a big stop here to limit the points scored, to limit the damage. Of course, they could get lucky, no points come across the board, but looks likely that Upper Moreland will be able to strike back here. 28 to 7 is our score, of course. PW looking good. They'll need to make some big stops here. This one. I'll advance a little bit up the field, and this one is not a touchdown. Very, very close. Inside the five-yard line now. Two-yard line, first and goal. Up a Moreland looking to break through with their second touchdown of the game. The Upper Moreland side is back awake. They've woken the crowd back up, giving them something to cheer for. So there we go. Big pile up of men up there, and the Colonials pushing back. This one doesn't quite work out in their favor. Colonials pushing back another yard. Still at the three yard line, still a good spot for Upper Moreland, but good stop from the Colonials, still need it again. Some of the fans in, this, in our section are pointing out, do it again to the defense. It's a handoff, it looks like. And they're stopped before they can get the touchdown, it looks like. Third down now in goal. Jim Roderick down at the one yard line. Third and goal. Okay. yards, he will get them a touchdown, their second of the game. Third and one, third and goal actually on the one yard line. And this one should be a touchdown for Upper Moreland. They'll get back on the board here to make it 28-13. It's their second touchdown of the game. Steven Broderick with the touchdown there on Upper Moreland side. We'll shoot for the extra point here. 9.34 in the second quarter. And extra point attempt is up, and it is blocked by the Colonials. Wow. Great defense here from the Colonials to stop them. 28-13. That feels insignificant, blocking just one point scoring. But that one point can make a big difference in a game decided by a touchdown or two, decided by an extra point being made or not. 
Colonials have made all four of theirs. Upper Moreland scored two touchdowns, made the first one, just missed that one. 9.34 to go. Obviously, it sets Upper Moreland up in a spot where if they can hold the Colonials off and score two touchdowns, they gotta make a second point, a two point conversion in one of those touchdowns to tie the game back up. Those one point might not seem like much, but in the longer run of the game, that can be pretty troublesome when you're trying to stage a comeback, even take back the lead. BW players seem unfazed though by the turn of events. They're determined to strike back again. Moreland goes to the kickoff. And this one's a deep kickoff there. And it's recovered around midfield by the Colonials. I'd say about their 30, 40 yard line about. A lot of whistles came down. I'm not sure if there's a flag on the field or not. There might have been. They're doing the kickoff Legal again. Procedure on the Legal procedure on the kicking team. So they're going to do the kickoff again. Their kicker, so Luke Sword, he goes out for the kickoff one more time. Following the flag on the field. And there he goes. That kick's a little shorter. It takes a wicked bounce, and it's recovered by the Colonials. Kick out of bounds. Out of bounds. That'll go to the Colonials' 25-yard line, I believe. No, well, maybe a little farther. Time to get a gauge of where they are. Support our booster cloud and purchase some of the delicious food available in the snack stand area of this evening. Head on down to the snack stand for some delicious food. Colonials on their 34-yard line. That's where they'll, they'll start their first drive here, the second quarter. And that one, there's the handoff. There he goes. He's going to run for a while. They'll be stopped there. It's a decent gain on this one. Luke carry. Winterbottom with the carry again. Second down. Gain of about five on the play. That'll bring around second five, five yards. Down. Second and five now on the 39 yard line. And there he goes. He's looking for a big carry already. There he goes down the field, watch him run. Winterbottom again, torching the upper Moreland defense. So he makes another big carry here. He's been a big guy tonight and part of the offensive run by the Colonials. We move on up to upper Moreland's 40 yard line. You are now. He double can score. And there he goes with the carry. He's running for quite a while. It's a big carry, but a flag on the field again. We have seen a lot of flags. Aiden O'Brien there with the carry. He gained about 15 yards, but we'll see what the flag on the field has to say. Penalty is personal foul face personal mask. Personal foul face mask called on Upper Moreland. So PW will get to advance a little bit further up the field. The ball is now at the 12 yard line from that penalty. PW in a 
great spot here to score again. And there he goes. O'Brien looking to carry it himself, and he's going to take it in for a touchdown. Aiden O'Brien with the carry, makes the 12-yard run. BW's got their fifth touchdown of the game. So PW goes for the extra point again, and this one is up, and it is good. So Bay with his fifth extra point made today. PW now up 35-13. 8 20 to go here in the second quarter. PW will big. PW up big here by three touchdowns and an extra point missed. Now PW will go for the kickoff again. For Moreland looking to get a fast response. Spending some time talking on their side of the field. Now they're back out. Today, Sproul back out for the kickoff again. Team's main kicker. We saw a lot of Jared Colson last week doing some kicking. It was a special senior night thing. Looked pretty good out there. It's a good kicker option for this team. But it's back to Sabay. Sproul puts this one up. That's a deep kick. Way back there. And caught deep in PW, deep in their own territory. They'll make a decent run up the field. Still puts them around the 25 yard line, I'd say. Bad romance, that's what song you're hearing right now by the PW marching band. They've come out here in the freezing cold. Also the reason I'm out here. Uh, thanks for the ride, guys. BW looking to respond on defense, keep their three touchdown lead. Three touchdown with the extra point. The Moreland though, hoping to make a quick response. Again, their offense hasn't looked bad today. And they go up the field a little bit, but not too far. Inside hand off to Robert, tripped up around the line of scrimmage. Gain of one on the play. One yard gain there. Second and nine for the Bears. They're now on their 26 yard line. So, PW ready. And there they go. They're looking for a deep pass now down the field. And that one is incomplete. Third and nine now as it stays on the 26 yard line. BW now looking to stop them here, force another punt. 7.25 left. Almost halfway through the second quarter. We approach halftime. And there's his handoff. He's making a big run down the field. A flag is down. So is the man running. Steven Broderick around the right end. Steven Broderick. As he gains a decent amount here, but we'll see what the flag is on the field. They gained eight yards, though. Put them at third and one. Flag on the field may advance them or push them back. There is a flag down on the field. Is on the offense. And it looks like it's a holding penalty on Upper Moreland. So the big drive pushed back by a few yards there. 
They got a fourth down now. After marking off the penalty, that'll bring up a third and 12. Third and 12, rather, actually. They'll do it over again. <laughs> got a little bit of a disadvantage now for the Bears. Back on the 23-yard line in their own territory. And so, they're set, they're snap. Uh, I don't think she hands this one off. And they'll make the stop there on the side. P.W. celebrates, Herbert has stopped quickly. He gains three yards, but not nearly enough. Oh, that'll bring fourth down now. And there's a fumble as the ball was recovered by Plymouth White Marsh there. They'll get the ball deep in lower, more, upper Moreland, excuse me, territory. PW offense is having a field day today. First and 10. Now in their opponent's 27 yard line. 6.41 to go. Heat up looking for some big points here. And there he goes with short gain here. It looked like anything too Aiden significant the there. Keeper. Aiden O'Brien there with the carry getting hands two yards. Second and eight. On the 25 yard line, it looks like. Six twenty. BW lines up for the snap again. Oh, wow. And there's a flag on the field. That one looks like it's on Upper Moreland. Ooh, that's a false start there. Offsides instead, but regardless, it's on Lower Moreland. Upper Moreland. Wow. I think we're at the point of the game where the cold has gone through my brain. Fortunately, I don't have my sweatshirt near me, so. Well, hopefully by the second half, we'll have things sorted out for you. BW takes the ball at the 20-yard line now. Second and three. There he goes. And it looks like O'Brien was on that one with the carry. Another keeper by O'Brien, able to move the chain. And he's got a first down for the Colonials again. They're down to the 13-yard line. Colonials looking to strike again for their sixth touchdown this game. There they go already, quick, off and running. And that takedown does not look like they'll gain too many yards on the one. Number eight, Luke Winterbottom. Luke Winterbottom there with the carry. And one yard. Nine. Second and nine now from the 12 yard line. 5.08 to go. 35 13 is your score here in the second quarter. So, PW set for the snap. Here's a play on second down. O'Brien has this one, passes it, that one is caught. And this one will be a touchdown for the Colonials. Their sixth touchdown of the game here. As it makes it 41 to 13. Colonials, here they go for the extra point again. This one is up, and this one looks like it is good, I believe. 
And yes it is, 42-13 now. Six touchdowns for the Colonials with 4.37 to go in the second half. Last game they also, I believe, got their six touchdowns in the first half. Didn't score too many points afterwards. And as I've noted with this team, I believe I noted it last week, they're still a team that does all of their scoring early on, seems to save most of their points in the first two quarters. Put a lot of that early pressure on. You can take some time to relax a bit. You got a good amount of people out for this one. You still get some people every now and then crossing into the stands on our side. Weather well, has not deterred them one bit. Another thing that hasn't deterred them, the fact that the Phillies are playing tonight, of course, World Series game one. By the time you're seeing this, it's already happened, so hopefully we're up 1-0. I'm gonna make the bold prediction they win. We'll go with 5-3 tonight. I know Verlander's history in the World Series isn't that great. Of course, he's still a very, very good arm. Defying father time. Here's the kickoff by Sproul. We're back on track now. Deep kickoff there. That one will be fairway way down into Upper Moreland territory. On the 25 yard line, in Upper Moreland territory. Of a decent amount of time here, 4.35 to score. There aren't too many stops here on the clock. Clock only really stops from the scoring driver timeout. They've still got to make that response quick. And there they go up the field a little bit, but it looks like a very short gain, if any. Second down, gain of two now, makes it sec second and eight on the 27 yard line. Moreland goes back, they're ready. Colonial is dispersing now, they're ready as well. And there they go. Trying to march down the field a bit, but the Colonials have stopped them. Won't get that significant of a gain here. Third and seven now, the 28 yard line. Colonials looking for another stop here. Bears being forced to think a little bit about how they're gonna go with this. Very capable of getting that big pass, big run, for big gain. We we'll have some camera shaking. We have Sweet Caroline going on. And there they go, trying to get down the field, and they will not make it far enough. So, fourth down now. Lost a yard on that one, makes it fourth and eight. We're going to make fourth and eight now for Bears. 42 to 13. Obviously, really difficult spot for the Bears here. Don't really have much of a choice to punt here. It'd be risky to go for it. But we'll see what their game plan is. And yeah, looks like they're gonna go for the punt. It's a decent one. We'll get there around midfield, maybe. Down at the 31 yard line on PW's end. Colonials will take it over, 2.07 to go in the second quarter. Not much time left here. We'll look to see if they can make some big plays here, take a big drive down the field, secure what would be their seventh touchdown of the game. You can believe it. So we'll get ready for the Colonials to make their march down the field. 
O'Brien going, he's scrambling, but he's in trouble. He's got to get this ball out somehow, and he does. Incomplete pass, but they'll avoid the sack. And there's another flag on the field. Whole lot of flags today so far. We're still in the second quarter, and we've seen tons of them already. I don't know if that's going to be a talking point for the coaches as we get into the halftime. Indication that the flag is waved off. And flag's been waved off. So second and 10 at the 31 yard line. Colonial's looking to respond here with a gain of yards. So the team disperses. 158 to go here. And timeout called. This one called by PW. Still talking things out a little bit. They'll talk out an offensive plan. So we've got 42 to 13 our score here with 158 to go. As well as the presentation of the 2022 Upper Royalty Court. Upper Moreland Marching Band getting ready for their halftime performance, as well as the Royalty Court getting ready to be introduced here. Of course, as we mentioned, it's the homecoming game and senior night for Upper Moreland. Very nice night for them, their fans, as well as the families too, and the staff that's put a lot of time in these students as well. Colonials will be the first to break from the timeout. And now here comes Upper Moreland, they're out too. 158, second and 10 on the 31 yard line in Colonial territory. Only well, we got about two minutes to march down the field to try and score, but of course with the Colonials, you can't count that out as being a possibility. There they go. And there's the handoff, there he goes, he's making a big break down the field. Look at him run, he's looking for daylight. He's gonna find some, and he's gonna make it all the way in for a touchdown. Seventh touchdown of the game for the Colonials here in the second half, in the second quarter, excuse me. Luke Winterbottom. Luke Winterbottom, another big game. A late flag in the end zone is called. We'll see if it has an effect on the outcome. It does not, it'll be 48 to 13 with the extra point opportunity looming. We'll see what happens. I'm already starting to feel like I'm losing my voice a bit. Certainly does not bode well if this pattern continues for the Colonials, a big score. Unsportsmanlike conduct on the offense is the penalty that's been called. They won't get the touchdown. Still, they're deep within, they're deep within Upper Moreland territory. Still got a good chance to make the score here. 144 to go. The flag might have been waved off. The touchdown is good. Yeah, touchdown's good, so they'll disregard that in terms of the flag. The penalty will be enforced on the kickoff instead. Colonials now looking for their seventh extra point in the game. Sebe hoping to keep his perfect record up. We just missed it. I believe they made the extra point. 49 to 13 now. Colonials are up huge. Obviously really difficult. We've got 144 to go. <laughs> 49 13, 144 to go in the second quarter. And the PW cheerleaders are currently doing push ups. We think we've got it for every touchdown so far. That's the theme I'm getting. I'm thinking maybe a, 
uh, push up for each point scored on the drive. That's what it looks like to me. We've only seen touchdowns on the Colonial side, of course. So PW will go for the kickoff again. 144 here in the second quarter. So Vesperl lines up for the kickoff attempt. If it's carry on my wayward son. That's what the marching band's playing. Our own Sebastian Krolak, he would have loved that. Huge Kansas fan there. Fulcrum Channel starting up soon. I believe he's shooting next Tuesday. So that's something to look forward to if you're a big fan of Star Wars. And Sproul with the line drive kickoff. That one is caught. Wow, nice catch. They move up a little bit. And they'll hang out around midfield. I like some of the cheerleaders tonight. Obviously showing up in some very frigid weather. Everyone who showed up on Lower Moreland and PW side deserves some credit. And I think we have another flag. There has been a lot tonight. Some of them have been waved off. 137 to go. As for me, I'm hoping the SD card makes it that we're recording on to. Still got a good amount of space to go. But hey, CITV always finds a way. That's the most important part. What does the S stand for? It stands for problem solving. Actually, I believe that's what the P would stand for. It's a long night already for me. I already feel the cold getting to my head. Both teams will disperse now. Looks like that flag was on Upper Moreland as they take a big march down their own side of the field. Sends it back around the 30, it looks like. Yep, up on the Upper Moreland 33 yard line, first and 10. We've got 137 to go to try and respond here in the second quarter. So end of the first half looms large. And there we go. There's a big takedown there from the Colonials. Looks to be a short gain of yards for Benny. Wow, lost a nine on that one, actually. It's an eight, actually, excuse me. Second and 18 on the 25 yard line. It's hard to tell what happened for a second. But yeah, big loss there. Colonials forcing pressure. Clock keeps counting down. We're just about to get under a minute here. But here we are, we're under a minute to go. And there he goes. He tries to hand it off. There he goes down the field. He's making quite a big And he'll make a pretty significant run there. Gets back up near midfield. The first and 10 again. I believe they're on the Colonials 45 yard line. Possibly they're on 45 yard line. 41 seconds to go. Big play shouldn't be out of the question here. Both offenses have proven, have proven very capable of that big positive game. So, here we go. Looking for the snap here. 41 seconds to go on the clock. And there's the snap. The ghost tries to hand it off, and they'll make a quick stop around midfield. So, just again, a handful of yards here. 32 seconds now. Coming very close at the end of the first half. And up in Moreland, I believe, want a timeout? I believe that's what happened. No more timeouts left for Upper Moreland. PW still has two of theirs. 33, 33 seconds left in the second quarter. 49-13 is our score. Obviously, PW is just stuffing this offense and stuffing the defense as well. It's been so hard for Upper Moreland tonight to try and make a response. 
Haven't really had the opportunity to either. Colonials, they've played their traditional brand of great offense, untraditionally for Upper Moreland. A lot of points allowed, something we have not seen very much this year from them. So halftime, it's going to be very interesting to know what the locker room conversation will be on Upper Moreland's end. So both teams back on the field. Upper Moreland looking for some magic here with 33 seconds to go, 32 seconds to go actually, excuse me. And there they go. They're going with a carry and set. He tries to let a pass go and he gets one out. They'll get to the PW 30 yard line. They're moving about short burst to nine, 10 seconds. They gotta scramble quick, your clock's counting down. It's not waiting for anyone. And ball spiked at the 30 to stop the clock. Ball spiked at 30 yard line, second and 10 for the Bears. 15.3 seconds to go. Bears looking for that big run. Maybe try to pull something off here with limited time, make something happen. PW's made a substitution real quick. Sean Johnson has entered the game for PW. Senior Zach Smith has exited. So up in Moreland's back, they're ready. 15.3 to go. And they're going for the pass here. That's a deep pass. And it's intercepted! PW stops them with 7.7 .7 left to go. Just a final punch in the gut there. Chase Smith there with the interception. PW will take over now. First and 10, I believe, on the 20 yard line. Their own territory, obviously, no pressure here to do much of anything. Up 49 13 to go with 7.7 .7 seconds to go. So, we're getting ready to enter the second half. EW, oh, the flag might have been called or timeout. And no, no end it. Rock's going to run down, and PW will take it. Into the half of 49 to 13. It's been a big first half for the Colonials, full of tons of offense. They made a big push down the field continuously. They've swallowed the Bears alive. It's been very, very difficult to respond for Upper Moreland. It'll be interesting to see what their approach is coming out of the half. They're down big, but they're not a bad team. Certainly better than I think what tonight's results show. Obviously, a lot to think about on both sides. State championship on the line. 49-13, we're going to go into the half. So, Ladies and gentlemen, while our upper as the Upper Moreland marching up band field. sets up, I do have and the homecoming winning ticket. gets themselves ready too, we'll be going to the half. 49-13, Cornels have the lead going Here's into the chance. second half, win, third win corner. The winning ticket and number. we'll see you right after the break. Three, seven, Well, the second half is about to begin. PW is up big, 49 to 13 as we enter the third quarter. It's been a great game on PW's side. They've played fantastic football. Either way, you slice it, offense, defense. It's evidenced in the scoreboard, as you can tell. I mean, Upper Moreland, their offense hasn't been bad today. Just They just haven't really gotten to get much of a chance. The second they make a mistake, it's capitalized on almost right away. Obviously, though, PW has a lot to be happy about as we come close to the end of the state championship game. A lot to play for for PW. Both teams meeting at the half. Story for this game, of course, has been the offensive dominance of PW. Seven touchdowns. Seven extra points all made. I mean, there's not been much to complain about if you remember the Colonials. It's been fantastic football, as you mentioned. And 
on Upper Moreland side, it's just been a story of it's it's hard to call it a bad football game by them. I know the scores would certainly say that, but they haven't played terribly. But what happens is the Colonials have been able to capitalize on every mistake they make. And obviously, that's playing out in a big way, 49-13. Second half about to get started here. PW will be kicking off. Might see some more of the second, third string players coming in now. Something to look out for. PW's marching band is out of the stands now. They've got their third quarter break, and that one is kicked off. And a flag will start off the third quarter. A ton of flags today. Indication is illegal procedure on the kicking team. Legal procedure on the kicking team will restart things. We've got a Phillies game update. Well, they're down one nothing early. Kyle Tucker of the Astros with the home run. They look for the quick response. PW Milan about to do the kickoff again. My prediction was 5-3, Phillies would win, so Astros can't score more than two more for me to be right on that end. As kickoff there is, it might have been caught by PW. I think PW might have actually recovered this one, we'll see. And yes, PW recovers the kickoff there. As their reign of dominance continues tonight. First and 10 now. They have encroached a little bit into Upper Moreland territory, it looks like. But they're on the 46 yard line. And so, Colonials line up for the first drive of the second half. And here we go. There's a big running gain. Look to gain a few yards on this one. Inside handoff, number 34, Tommy Hannon. Tommy Hannon there taking the handoff. It's four yards, second and six now on the 42 yard line. Colonials make it, looking to make the march down the field. Here goes the snap, and that ball is handed off. I think the Hannon there, who gains a few more yards on this one. Number 34, Hannon again. Tommy Hannon there, taking the handoff. Yep. Gain four more. Third and two now. Third and one, actually, on the 42-yard line. P.W. looking to advance. And there they go, they got the handoff. And he's wrapped up quickly here, but I believe they pushed through for the first down. And yes, they did. So, fourth step, so the first down now. New set of downs. First and 10 on Upper Moreland's 34 yard line. Colonials looking to add what would be their eighth touchdown of the game. And there he goes. They'll make a pretty big game there. Looks like there might have been a flag on the field. Not quite sure. I might have seen Greg one. On Greg Feinberg with the carry. He gains around 11 yards. Another first down for PW now on the 23 yard line, closing in on the end zone. <laughs> PW looking to carry, continue their push down the field. There's the handoff. There he goes. Look at him run. And he'll make it all the way down near the corner there. I think that might have been Nase Box. Boggs or Winterbottom? I say Boggs. It's another first down for the Colonials. Right the 
Ball now on the 13 yard line, Upper Moreland territory. Ten to go here. As the clock counts down here in the third quarter. BW looking to add another touchdown to an already dominant offensive game. And so there you go. Now on the field there advance. He breaks away a bit. He'll make a pretty good game as he now gets into the red zone. Second and one now on the four yard line. Down to about the five yard line. They'll bring up a second and two. Second and two now. Or second and one actually. BW just a few yards away from what will be their eighth touchdown. And there they go. On the field, they're charged, and that will be a touchdown for the Colonials. To make it 4, 55 to 13. Feels a little bit empty now without the marching band here. They get their well deserved break here for the third quarter. point of 10 by Save and it is good it now makes it 56 to 13 you might have heard the fans behind us they made their own marching band chant because why not got to improvise when you're lacking the band do what you can to get that same energy 56 to 13 with 705 to go Saints have begun clearing up now on the upper Maryland side. The W side is still remaining vigilant. So PW goes out to the field. They're ready for the kickoff. Check Save Sproul again out for the kickoff now. Still sticking with their starters here in the third quarter up big. Of course it's the playoffs, so a little bit more is at stake. You don't want to risk anything too big. But in a way, I believe you've earned the right here to start using some of the second and third string players. Still Sproul sets for the kickoff. There he goes, he puts this one up. Kickoff. That was a deep kickoff there by Sproul, but for Moreland, made a pretty line. decent Upper run there on their 32 the yard line. First and 10. So Upper Moreland now trying to take advantage, get a scoring opportunity here. And it's like a handoff there. But Moreland will gain a couple yards on this play, nothing major. Inside handoff is Stephen Broderick. Stephen Broderick there gets the handoff. Gain of four on the play. That'll gain the four yards, six. second and six now. 36 yard line. So the line up for the snap again here, second and six. We're under six minutes now. 
And there's a handoff there, but it's stopped. It'll be a loss of yards for Upper Moreland. It's got to feel pretty deflating there. Third and six. Third and six. Not a loss of yards there, but no gain of yards either. Keep it neutral. Well, it's now 2 nothing Astros here in the second. Looking a little dicey early on in the Phillies game. I think in a way, as optimistic as you want to be, you have to prepare yourself if they lose. You can't go into the mindset thinking it's an easy series win. It's still going to be very difficult, though. Oh, flag's been thrown onto the field. Indication is offsides on the defense. Offsides on the defense here, PW. And see what the advances here. Second so advance of about five yards. Yep, third and one. Gain of five yards on the penalty there, so Bears are on the 41 yard line in their own territory. Got a bit of a break there. Look to take advantage of this one. There's a handoff, and PW stops him. See how short it was. It looked like a major gain, but it's enough for the first down. So it'll be a new set of downs. On the 43-yard line now. Upper Moreland territory still, but making the push up field slowly but surely. Over four minutes to go. 56-13, of course, the score. So there's a snap. It's handed off. Good stop. Will prevent them from making any advancement. Maybe makes it back to the line of scrimmage. second and ten. Second and ten, so it does not look like there was a gain there. So on the 43-yard line, Bears still looking to advance. Also, the Colonials doing their best to make it difficult. And there he goes with the hand. Off and there's a pass. It is. I think it might be incomplete. Sean Herbert's pass complete. Yeah, it's complete. Again, number three, Zion Kimbo. Zion Kimbo. Stepped out of bounds. At about the 42 yard line. Stepped out of bounds, but he's at the 42 yard line. line. So they're back within PW territory now, looking to threaten for their first touchdown in a bit. First and ten, a new set of downs. Some members of the Marching Colonials starting to make their way back slowly but surely. Not a lot of different creative costumes. Of course, it's had a Halloween parade at some of the elementary schools earlier. Herbert setting up for the pass. It's a deep one, but it's picked off by the Colonials. Watch them run down the field. And they'll be stopped around the 20 yard line about. And there's a big scrum over there, right around the 20 yard line. Colonials will pick him off. Big deflating play there. Run back to the Upper Moreland 23 yard line. Upper Moreland, the chances to come back have kept getting dashed by the Colonials over and over again. It's got to be a pretty sinking feeling, especially knowing this is a win or go home game. We're under two minutes to go here. Fifty-six thirteen. So PW lines up for the snap. And there they go. Let's hand it off. And they'll make a decent gain up the field. Up more 
more of the a lot more members of the marching colonials have returned. Gives us some noise from our side. Second and one for the colonials now. Number 17, Andrew Gain of nine on the play. We'll bring the second one for the colonials. 14 yard line now. So under a minute to go, the clock's going down. Second by second, tick by tick. And they'll go with the run here. And a big pile up over there. It doesn't look like any gain though. Trying to gain a little bit. We'll see if it's enough for a first down if they did gain any. Caden Lezinski, quarterback on the keeper. No gain on the play, and Wazinski the there with the carry, but didn't the gain ball. any yards. 20 seconds to go, and it looks like you know, a timeout's been called, or they'll just choose to run the clock out and go to the fourth quarter. And yeah, I believe that might be the plan here. Clock keeps going down, and the third quarter has officially come to a close. 56 to 13, the Colonials have a big lead. They're threatening as we get into the fourth quarter coming up soon. But you can see the score for yourself. I mean, Colonials have just played a dominating game. You gotta feel like on their side, the game has been won already. Obviously a lot can happen in football, but in a pretty good spot now. The Colonials get ready to go into the fourth quarter. So while we have a minute, we'll make some quick thank yous out. Thank you to Mr. Kahlo, of course, who's responsible for a lot of our CITV productions, of course, helping me get set up with all of the equipment I need. Thank you to myself for finally learning how to tie a tie. I'd say I learned how to tie it. It didn't go quite well, but it's functional, and I'll definitely accept that, given it's my... Kind of had to learn on the spot here during some of the introductions early in the game. I'll take it. I'll take it. Thank you to the Marching Colonials, of course, coming out here, providing the noise, and providing me with a way to get here to begin with. I'm sure this won't be the last time I'm gonna have to become one with the band kids to make my way up wherever the Colonials land. Thank you to the sweatshirt I remembered to pack today. Oh, wow. I tried a handoff here, but that's a big hit. Colonials will take a massive loss there. So they're not too much Fourth and eight now. Boyles on their opponent's 21 yard line. I think you're gonna go for it, we'll see. That's what it looks like. We're gonna run and gain up the field. Doesn't look like a big one though. Might not have been enough. We'll see. He did not get enough, so it's a turnover on down. Up for Moreland taking over on their own 21 yard line, obviously making things very difficult. If you're the, if you're Upper Moreland right now, there's there's still something to play for, of course, in the state championship game. But obviously, you feel like the game's starting to slip away from your grasp a bit. We've seen their stand start to empty out, fizzle out a little bit. So at this point, I think you're trying to play some of the younger guys on the team, maybe take out some of the seniors. At the same time, though, there's merit to keeping the seniors in, letting them get some final memories on the football field. There's a running play there, and they'll make a decent gain here. They're continuing to go up the field. Flag is on the field. Steven Broderick on the carry. Across the Steven Broderick with the carry again. Looks like there's a late flag on the far sideline. And 24 to go. We've got 17 minutes on our SD card here, so. We're gonna really be pushing it to the end. Personal foul. Personal foul on the Colonial side, I believe, as Upper Moreland marches up the field. 
If I'm gonna make this with the storage and RSD card, well, you better see a quick end to this game soon. Can't keep having all these flags. So, first and 10. And they'll go with the handoff here, looks like. And big scramble there on the field. Not much of a big gain, though. Inside handoff, Broderick, gain of four on the play. Gain four yards here, second and six on the 48 yard line. Uh, nine and a half minutes to go here in the last quarter of the game. And we'll take the handoff here. Getting a few more yards here. They got past the 40. Down at the 39 yard line, third and one. Colonial's got to make the stop here from scoring. But right now, a touchdown does not make much of a difference in this game, to be fully honest. And here they go. They're going with the running play again, and they brought him down. That looks like a loss of about two yards, maybe. Oh no, they did gain the yard on that one. So it's a first down again on the 38 yard line. Looked like they made a lost a yard for a second. The camera is zooming out again. There's gotta be something wrong with our remote, but there's not much I can do right now. We're over eight minutes to go here. And go with the run. They're making a big breakaway. And Lower Moreland will get to about the 20-yard line, maybe. A flag, though, is on the field. So, 8.06 to go, 56-13. see what the flag is on in a second. I believe it was a flag. Dead ball, personal foul on the defense. Dead ball, personal foul on PW again. The so the there's down. anything that you can really complain about with PW today. There's been a ton of fouls today on them. A ton of penalties. Something that will have to be addressed, I think. But obviously today, it's not making too big of an impact. But in future games, and tighter games, it's obviously something that you really want to win it. The goal at the 12 and a half yard line, first and 10, upper corner. First and 10 for Upper Moreland. Clock counts back down, we're under eight minutes. And the snap, they hand it off. And they'll make a decent gain back up the field. Be a pretty significant gain. It wasn't enough for the first down, but maybe about five yards, I'd say. Four yards. Second and six now on the eight yard line in PW territory. They look for touchdown Robert number Robert three. Four on the play. Bring up a second, again with the carry, they said. And here's the snap. They hand this one off. But the stop will be quick and the stop will be brief. Broderick's been getting the ball a lot today. Move down to the five yard line, I believe they say. Gain of a couple, that'll bring up third and four now for the Third and four on the six yard line, so it's only a game of two instead. So three. Not too much risk here if you're lower Moreland. If you don't get the first down here, it might still be worth going for it. Clock keeps ticking down. We're at six and a half minutes to go. And that's a big run there. I don't know if it was enough for a touchdown. In for the touchdown. And it touchdown is. Broderick gets the touchdown, third touchdown in the game for Upper Moreland. 56 to 19. It's 
still obviously a big hole to climb out of for them, but we'll take the points here, no matter how you can get them. I feel good to get them anyways. So up and more will go for the extra point. No score updates set on the Phillies game. There's the extra point attempt. It is good. 56 to 20 now. So the Colonials will look to respond. They got 6.20 to go here. Obviously, again, there hasn't been too much to complain about these three touchdowns. You don't really concern yourself with them as much. Of course, given that they've scored eight today, made all the extra points, and made all the right plays they've needed Ladies to. Ladies and gentlemen, I would like to take this opportunity to acknowledge our marching unit seniors. Thank you for a great four years. Casey Gemson, Katie Hepperman, Isabella Lichtinger, Emily Now, Sarah Olszewski, Matt Cantos, Devin Roof. So, Luke Upper, upper Moreland, we go for the kickoff, almost called him Upper Marion. Having a very <laughs> long, <laughs> cold <laughs> night so far up here. I would say it's been the worst night I've had. At least I got the sweatshirt tonight. I don't have to depend on someone for their jacket again. But I do owe a lot to Lena. I think those few minutes might have saved me. Here's the kickoff. It's a short one. And it is gobbled back up. I believe PW has it. Well, fielded at the 46-yard line. PW does have the ball. And also, they are in their own 46-yard line here. Not too far to go. Clock's just about to enter under six minutes here. Gotta be thinking about the end of the game a little bit if you're PW. Definitely earned the right to though. Well, there they go with the handoff here. Stopped around midfield. They've about a gain of two or three. Inside. Second and seven here for PW on the 49-yard line. Approaching their way to Upper Moreland territory. It's been very impressive the way they came in here and were able to steamroll an opponent in hostile territory, as you call it. Well, Colonials go for the snap here, second and seven, the 49 yard line. And there they go, there's a the handoff. And he's got uh, some room to run. And he'll make the room count. It's a first down as they enter in, they enter into Upper Moreland territory. Out of bounds, about the 44 yard line. On the 44 yard line now from Moreland's territory. PW ready for the snap. First and 10 with a new set of downs. And this one's handed off. Got some room to run a little bit. Had to gain a couple yards here. Clock keeps ticking down. Now we're under four I'm minutes. Now for the Colonials, kind of feel like they're playing a bit of a waiting game here. They're ready for the game to end, I think. 56 to 20, I think both sides are getting ready for the game to end. It's been a good season for both teams. I think this loss should not taint Upper Moreland's year at all. 
Eight and two will still be a very impressive record. Timeout is called. Timeout called on the field. Timeout. PW. PW takes the timeout here. 3.29 to go. Seven minutes. Let's zoom back in on the marching man. Let's see if any of them notice. It's Audrey in the duck costume. It's not live, but it's going to be uploaded like tomorrow or sometime over the weekend. Some of the PW's cheerleaders. Ladies and gentlemen, the upper Marlins football team is still be awaiting word on district playoff positioning. Stay tuned. Still waiting word on what the location of the opponent week. will be for next week for PW. I'd like to wish just a best of luck that. to our marching union students as they compete at the Phoenixville Cavalcade of Bands competition tomorrow. Oh, there's a marching band competition they announced just now. Tomorrow. Special thanks go out to the upper Very tough for a marching band. I can't imagine. All the work they have to put in, all the program. equipment they got to lug around, too. And all home Three twenty-nine to go here. Not much time left on the clock. And PW will hand it off. And they'll make a decent run up the field. Might be good for about five yards, I'd say. Luke Lavioli with the carry. And nine yards, actually, on that gain. Second and one. Third and one now. Third and one, excuse me. We're all over the place here. Now on the 35 yard line, I believe. Yep. Under three minutes to go. Clock feels like it's going down a lot quicker than I expect it to. We're gonna have to make a very brief outro because I am starting to run out of time that I have space to record. So I'm thinking get this game done soon. Here we go with the handoff. And uh, that'll be a quick stop. Here we go, here we go. 36 to go. There's a fumble there from the Colonials. So a turnover, a rare mistake here for the Colonials. Well, this clock keeps counting down. We're under two and a half minutes now. Might now just be a run the clock out kind of game. The outcome kind of looks decided here. 56 to 20 with two minutes to go. Both teams now kind of playing these last couple minutes out for pride. Ball goes right off about three minutes of space to make an ending. As there's a carry upfield, they'll make a decent gain. Nothing too significant. Hand off to Steven Roderick. Roderick with the handoff again. Mark Lafredo. So second down now. Second and ten, Bears did not advance on that play. Now we're near one minute to go. Fifty-six to twenty as we get down to the last minute here of the state championship game. There they go with the handoff. On them. They'll stop him here. It doesn't look like a big gain. See Roderick there. Down to the final minute. Third and seven, 39 yard line. And as the clock keeps ticking down, wave both sides are getting prepared to say goodnight. There we go. 
There might be one or two more plays after this. Big handoff, big run there. And they'll get around near midfield. The clock's about to run out and this game has come to a close as the Plymouth White Marsh Colonials have won the state championship game 56 to 20 in Upper Moreland against the Bears. PW wins a big game as they'll continue their season. We'll leave you with the marching band performance here. We had a great game from the Colonials. I gotta make my wrap up short, unfortunately, but wow, what a game. Offense came out big. Defense made the big stops when they needed to. Got a few turnovers that helped them score these points. And as they advance further in the playoffs, got to feel pretty good, especially with a big win like this against a good team. Colonials now on the season. They'll move up to eight and two. And as I'm ready to sign off, Aaron Sean, I hope you guys have a great night. I hope the Phillies are winning by the time I'm done. I hope by the time you guys are seeing this, we've got a win in our pockets. 56 to 20 is our final score. I'm Aaron Sean. Thank you again to Mr. Robert Cahill, setting up the equipment as always, being very helpful for us in getting these shoots done. No matter how short-staffed we are, we make it work. Thank you to the marching colonials who ride up here to ride back home. I'm Aaron Sean signing off. Have a great night, Plymouth White Marsh. <laughs>